Hello, everyone, and welcome to UAS Magazine's 2016 Editorial Outlook. I'm Luke Giever, Managing Editor of the Print and Online Publication. Before we proceed today, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping notes for today's webinar. This webinar will be recorded and available on our website within one week. Time permitting, we will take questions through the question and answer dialog box on your webinar platform. Joining me today is John Nelson, Director of Marketing and Sales for this magazine and the entire suite of products that's published through the magazine's parent company, BBI International. As your screen shows, we've got a lot of information to cover today. We'll do our best to keep today's webinar to roughly 30 minutes, but it can be tough stopping our team once we begin talking about all things UAS. In 2016, the scope of the magazine will continue to focus on commercial UAS operations and the incredible array of entities that are linked to pushing the use of UAS forward. As you might imagine, operating a magazine title with the term UAS in it means that our audience is constantly expanding. The popularity of UAVs is incredible right now. We reach and write for a wide range of industry segments from the smallest of the smalls to the biggest of the bigs. And from a content perspective, we're confident our team is telling the best, most timely and detailed stories that matter to the industry. Later on in this webinar, we'll talk about the major issues and topics that we see as important to the industry in 2016 and how our themes for each issue will work to target those certain issues and topics and tell the best stories of the industry. Now, before we do that, to talk about the exciting growth and reach of this particular publication, I'd like to pass it over to John Nelson. John? Thanks, Luke. So UAS Magazine is, is, ha, has original content and circulation that is primarily focused on commercial operators and manufacturers of drones, both small and large. These commercial operators and manufacturers make up a large section of the audience. If you look at this slide, you can see we have a circulation of 5,000. So uh, six times a year, we mail to 5,000 professionals in the UAS industry. Uh, we know from surveys that we've done with our publications, uh, third-party surveys, that we see about 2.6 readers per issue on average. So every issue that goes out, we, we know that about 2.6 people will be reading that. So thus the reason you see the 13,000 total audience number. So of that 5,000, a large section of that is made up by UAV manufacturers, UAV distri distributors, uh, people involved in precision egg, disaster and emergency response, uh, energy monitoring, scientific research, and so on, as you can see here on this slide. In addition to that, one of the things I want to make sure um, we talk about is we have gone through and every person who has a license with the FAA uh, per Section 333 and has an exemption and has gone through that process, there's more than a thousand, we mail a copy of UAS Magazine to those people. And, and why is that important to us? It's important to us because they are the commercial operators. They're the people that are work you know are using this in a commercial application and that is really what this um, this magazine is geared for so in addition to the numbers you see before you on this slide uh, we send our magazines to a number of large and important events focused on the UAS industry um, Luke's going to talk a little bit about those bonus distributions and those events when he gets into his editorial themes for uh, each issue so if you know, and, and really what I want to leave you with on this slide is if you're looking to reach professionals and companies who are looking to learn about the latest technologies, policies, innovative applications, and implementation into the U.S. airspace, UAS Magazine is one of the best uses of your advertising dollars. So we have, we call this slide Unmanned Aerial System 24-7. Really what we're talking about here is our online presence. And we have web exclusive news features and articles and contributions from industry experts, but Luke and his team are on a weekly basis, uh, more than a weekly basis, almost daily basis, adding new stories and original content to our website. And since July 1st, we've averaged 18,000 impressions 
and 9,000 visitors per month on to uasmagazine.com. So um, again, those are people specifically looking at unmanned aerial systems. Every month we know we have 9,000 visitors going there and they're reading multiple stories and that's important to you as an advertiser. So 74% um, of all of our visitors are from the U.S. Uh, followed by Canada, UK, Australia, France, China, India, Israel, and Germany and so on. And so U.S. Magazine truly has an international audience and, and if you want to reach companies focused on unmanned aerial systems in the U.S. as well as an on an international level, online advertising on UAS Magazine is one of the most cost-effective ways to reach these groups. Again, advertising starts at $95 a month. You can have a, a rectangle on, listed for a month rotating for $95. And so we see a lot of people that will buy out for the year and, and so on. So definitely w would recommend taking advantage of that. Here we have a, we're showing our UAS Weekly e-newsletter. So again, Luke and his team are sending this e-newsletter out every Wednesday. So this is a weekly e-newsletter that's jam-packed full of original content that Luke and his team are creating. And these stories, again, are being posted online, but this is kind of our way of reaching out uh, and getting people to read these stories. So as an advertiser, um, this is a, definitely a valuable tool because we send this e-newsletter every week to 47,000 people. So it's going out to 47,000 emails and people that are focused on the UAS industry. And again, with advertising starting at just $95 to have that lower, uh, you know, leaderboard, you know, it, it's it's definitely one of those things that you, if you're looking to say, hey, I need to figure out where to put my spend this year, this is a great application for you. Um, and, and the pricing is priced very good and very competitively considering the number of emails that go out. And in addition, uh, we will give you the names of the companies, uh, the back ends of the emails uh, of everyone who has clicked on your specific you know your specific ad so from that standpoint you can use it as a, a full lead generation tool not just hey you know did I did I drive traffic to my website you can also say hey I actually here are some companies that clicked on it and went to our website and looked at our information so again starting at ninety five dollars for forty seven thousand emails every week uh, I would highly recommend this uh, it's it's been one of our most popular um, spends from an advertising standpoint, we see our advertisers really go after this. So. so our social networks. So you may be wondering why are we talking about social networks? We have gone, um, for US Magazine, we've created a Facebook page, Twitter page, LinkedIn, Google Plus. We, we take the time to build our networks on these social media sites. So why is that important to you as an advertiser? If you're, if you're looking to advertise, it's important because we build these networks, we send, we, we send our original content, every story that's posted online, we post on our social media sites. They get clicked. So every, our whole reach on social media, they get forwarded, they get clicked on. Well, all that traffic is helping, or all, that, all those clicks are helping drive traffic back to our website where people will see your advertisement. So it's, it's a one way that we use social media. Uh, we provide a massive amount of content and drive people back to our website where hopefully they will see your advertisement online, click on it, and go to your website. So when looking at this, you want to look at three powerful ways you know, to leverage our magazine, you know, look at it from an integrated marketing approach. We would, we would, we would recommend that you take a look at send, you know, doing a print advertisement, some of our e-newsletters, some of our online. So if you really want to dig into our audience, we would ask that you would do a full campaign across the whole board with online, with e-newsletters, and so on. New this year to UAS Magazine, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say that. We, we did do one last year, uh, a webinar uh, for UAS Magazine, but we do this for all of our publications at BBI, and, and we have found that they are extremely, extremely successful at generating leads. So if you're saying, hey, I want to do a webinar, 
um, on a specific topic, Luke and his team will work with you if you become a sponsor for the, for a webinar. They will work with you um, and create a topic uh, that's focused on you and maybe give you even a speaking opportunity but uh, for a webinar. But what we find are, on average, we see close to 300 people register for these webinars um, and, and, and so on. So it's a great way to not only get advertising, but to also get a uh, speaking opportunity and then generate leads um, simply from the fact that anyone who registers for one of our webinars uh, that you are sponsoring as, as a diamond level sponsor, you will get all the leads uh, that, uh, that come from that webinar. We'll give you full contact information, including the emails. So I uh, definitely want to look at that. Our next slide here, we'll talk a little bit about the packages. And so we've got two packages for this. So you're going to have a diamond webinar uh, package. So you will be the main webinar. Again, that, that will include all registration content data. Um, you'll get contact information from a, uh, of talking about the attendees' interest. We're able to monitor that. How long were they on? When did they get on? Did they ask questions? You will see all that information. Um, we'll have a speaking opportunity for you. You'll have your top placement of logo both on marketing emails and the magazine website. You'll have your logo on the presentation. You'll have a two-minute commercial where you can talk about uh, your company's products and services or services. And then and we also have a um, – it, it basically becomes free to attendees. So it becomes a free webinar for people to go on, and that helps increase the number of people that get on and the number of contacts that are generated and leads that are generated for you. So. Um, and then we also post it on usmagazine.com in our on-demand section. So uh, we'll always have that up and running. And more as people register, we'll also give you those leads as well. So definitely want to talk about, you know, definitely would say if you're looking for lead generation and advertising, take a look at our webinar packages. They're very good. Um, they're, they're just a great way to kind of make sure you're generating leads and getting your full advertising. So we also have that the gold webinar. I just want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, if you're not, if if you're saying, "Hey, I just want the exposure that I get," uh, you can take a look at one of our gold webinar sponsorship packages, and you can do a 30, 30 second commercial and so on. But you don't get the lead, so that's only with a diamond. So definitely would recommend taking a look at that. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Luke, and he's going to chat a little bit about the magazine and, and each issue. Thanks, John. That's a great explanation of how UAS Magazine can really help others drive interest and revenue in their particular product or brand. Now, I want to talk about uh, how we can help others uh, understand the UAS industry better. Uh, and to help explain our scope of content, we chose this shot on the screen here of a previous table of contents page that we ran. As you can see, we cover everything related to commercial UAS operations, from manufacturing and distribution to flight operations to payloads. Uh, you can see certain tags we have to help people understand what stories are about on the screen here, from manufacturing and distribution to operations and payload, as I just mentioned. Uh, it's worth noting down in the bottom I had to make a note here that our covers are often a uh, popular reprint option for other uh, people to, to put in their offices and such. Now to, to move on and talk about 2016, uh, I think it's worth actually taking a step back and looking at 2015. It was certainly a historic and groundbreaking year for the UAS industry and in this picture here, uh, this is from the future site of the nation's first commercial UAS business park. It's actually located just a short drive away from our magazine's headquarters. And I chose this picture here for everyone to see that uh, some really unique and exciting things are happening in the industry. Uh, we, we attended that particular event, and in 2016, our team will be hitting the road and the air again to go behind the scenes of, of some of the most impressive UAS operations in the country or to many of the UAS-related events. Just think, there are now more than 2,500 entities operating UAVs for commercial purposes. The Smithsonian has added a fixed-wing UAV to its Washington, D.C. 
uh, facility display following a historic beyond visual line of sight flight that happened uh, just recently down in New Mexico. Uh, actually, a flight that our team wrote about after talking with the operators who were there on the ground. Uh, the industry has an undeniable momentum right now that is continually slowly opening the floodgates of activity uh, many of us have been, have been waiting for for some time. To transfer the state of the UAS industry from the real world to the world of print, our world on the magazine team, um, an industry really that, that we must add is full of challenges, it's full of opportunities, and certainly constant change. Uh, we're expanding our 2016 content offerings. Next year we'll be publishing more issues and tackling more topics. Our new 2016 focus really reveals something about the UAS industry that's important. We're past the point right now of hypothetical ideas for what UAVs can be used for, and we're now into a new mode, a new mode of thinking. UAVs are being used every day now, and we're theming our 2016 issues to pair content on the biggest issues, like sense and avoid, uh, with information on how UAVs are succeeding at a variety of end-use applications. In 2016, our audience will include those in the UAS industry that are already uh, familiar with the industry. It'll also include those end users that are working to learn more about the vast potential of implementing UAVs in today-to-day -day operations, whether they implement uh, a full new suite of, of platforms to their own operations or they bring on uh, UAS as a service. Now to go through each issue now I think will help explain what we see some of the biggest issues uh, occurring in 2016. Well, let us show you. To start 2016, our team is producing content on the numerous operations, training, and educational efforts underway in the UAS world. One of our writers, Ann Bailey, has already started on the, on the feature article. I know she's excited with her early results from some of the people she's talked to for the piece already. That feature will talk about some of the most practical and proven operational protocols or which of the many universities are truly market leaders. I'm excited for that story to come out in our first issue. As you can see, that feature sort of meets the system and platform theme we, we've set for ourselves. But we also have a look at end-use applications in every issue. And to accompany the content that I just mentioned that Ann is working on, we are putting our end-use application focus on emergency response, search, rescue, natural disaster relief, and weather research. We've written about each numerous times in 2015, but this year we are explaining what end-users are doing with their UAS programs, and more importantly, what the industry needs to know to continue to garner the end-users business. Like many of our issues, the January-February issue, will include bonus distribution as well. You can see it in the top right. And those bonus distributions always significantly boost the mailing list for that month. The second issue of the year, look at the evolution of cameras, sensors, gimbal systems, and other payload options that are all truly staggering once you sit down and look at all the various options. Our team, I know, continues to be bombarded with camera and sensor updates every week from outside sources. We all need to recognize, if we haven't already, how important these developments are to the growth and functionality of the industry. For the March-April issue, expect to see a review of the best and most useful offerings. And for the end-use application, it only made sense to pair the system and platform focus for this month with a look at the end-use application of mapping and surveying. For all those GIS specialists or professional mapping firms out there, this will be a great issue to show and tell what matters most in the use of UAVs for mapping and surveying. Following that issue, uh, the, second, the second issue of the year, which will be distributed at uh, an exciting event that we actually just added to our uh, webinar, sl webinar slate today is a uh, is a Texas UAS event that we'll be releasing more information on shortly, but it's an event in Texas that will really showcase all the great things happening there. Um, and, and to showcase the great things happening around the world, our main June issue uh, will be at the biggest UA event, UAS event in the world, AUVSI's now termed Exponential Show. For anyone who hasn't been there or is only considering it, it truly is a must-attend event 
And if you're there, like last year, I hope you find me. Uh, we had many great conversations with many people. And from an editor's standpoint, it's a great way to uh, aggregate a lot of content in a few days. So we're greedy when it comes to that, and we like to chat with as many people as we can. For that issue, we'll be undertaking a huge task, writing about the developments pertinent to small UAVs. By then, we hope at least, the small rule will be close to finalization. All small UAS users know that when it does, the world will never be the same as an unprecedented number of platforms enter the commercial airspace. Our end use focus will, not coincidentally, be linked to the one thing small UAVs do best, take photos and video from the air. When we publish an exclusive article on the first six UAS firms to receive a Section 333 exemption from the FAA earlier this year, we received a huge amount of feedback and commentary. We expect the same level of attention for these two topics as we all know how important these certain topics are to the current UAS world. Following our look into small UAS, we're going to shift gears and write about the other side of the spectrum, medium and large UAVs. Our team has already had the privilege of going behind the scenes of some of the most impressive large UAV operations in the world. How else do you think we got some of the photos here that you see on the screen? And we will continue those efforts next year. With the small UAS rule closing out, we hope, the attention will soon be on medium and large scale UAVs. And again, to accompany our platform focus, we've paired it with well-linked topics. And this issue will be covering updates on the effort put forth for UAS-based defense and security. End users interested in such information will really be pleased with this issue based on the type and number of stories we are pursuing that will detail some of the most cutting edge technology and operations in the defense and security space. Right around early harvest time, we'll be putting our end use application focus and the September-October issue towards the sector that many believe still holds the most potential for UAS, and that's precision ag. As I've said earlier, the focus will not be on what could be done, but what has been done, and more importantly, who is doing it the best. This issue will be perfect for those agronomists, large-scale farm operations, or precision ag specialists that want to gain an upper hand on the competition by accessing insider knowledge on the state of UAS precision ag tech and software. This event will actually be uh, the event on the screen will actually be the bonus distribution destination for the magazine. It's called the Big Iron Farm Show, so it seems like the perfect event to have a precision ag issue going to. For the platform and system focus, we'll look at the many software data or analysis platforms that are on the market. If you haven't heard it by now, it is truly the data that many believe represents the greatest asset and use case for UAS. We believe that ideal to be true, and for this issue, we'll be explaining the latest in data storage, retrieval, and usage. Finally, to close out the year, our sixth print issue will detail processing systems and the power supply options available to the industry today. We've written about everything from hydrogen to diesel to solar powered options this year, and we expect those stories will only expand in 2016. Efficiently powering these UAVs is truly crucial for operational success. The end use theme is one of great popularity as well, and by the time we get to this issue, it could be one that could have some major breakthroughs. To end the, to end the year, we'll be explaining package delivery and cargo transport and where it is at in the lab and in reality. As we all know, this will be a very well-read issue based on the popularity of the topic. For now, that wraps up our editorial calendar outlook for 2016. As you leave us in a few minutes, we hope you remember that we are always available to talk URS or hear story pitches. We also hope you remember that 2016 will be another historic year, both fiscally and operationally for the UAS industry. We'll be covering the most important issues and the most important lesson learned, wants and needs from the end use operator as well. With that, I'd like to explain uh, and say a special thanks to today's sponsor, UAS Summit and Expo, taking place in Grand Forks, North Dakota. If you weren't there last year, it was a great show, and uh, we'd be excited to see you there again this year if we don't see you at a different show. And now, to end today's webinar, John Nelson has a few comments. Thank you. 
Thanks, Luke. That was a thorough breakdown of the content that we can uh, expect to see next year, and I think the themes are, are right on target, especially you, you did a nice job matching up the themes with the bonus distribution um, to help advertisers. Um, one thing I do want to point out uh, for those of you paying attention is we have last year we this was a quarterly magazine but due to the the, the overwhelming response we had uh, we have increased our circulation to six times a year so um, anyone who who has been paying attention to that um, that that is what we're doing it is it went from a quarterly to six times a year and 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 so on and we may increase that if if it keeps growing so um, it's moving in the right direction so we're we're happy about that um, as promised we have for all those who are on today's call we are giving a 35 percent discount for one full page print ad in UAS magazine and this offer expires January 1st so if you are interested in that give us a call uh, at the number below or give us shoot us an email Austin and Bob uh, definitely will be interested in chatting with you and talking about that so on behalf of UAS magazine we thank everyone being on today's call we hope you choose to utilize UAS Magazine in 2016 when building your marketing and advertising strategy. Thanks again and have a great day.